Welcome, everybody. Welcome, beautiful people, to the NDA Podcast, March 26th, 2024. Oh, man, this year is just going right through us. And so, um, yeah, busy day. Busy day, folks. Well, thank you for joining me to the NDA Podcast. I'm Rodi, a.k.a. Sketchcraft. And what this is, is I am going to be drawing here on my Cintiq today. I'm working on a comic called Spawn Kills Every Spawn. But I cannot share this comic with you while I'm working on it, only once it's out. So while I work, behind me, I'm going to play a video of some artwork that I did in the past. In this case, it's going to be a Copic Marker Nightcrawler piece from the X-Men I did in 2016. Let me just go ahead and turn on Little Rob. Uh, there's Little Rob. And turn off Big Rob. And let's turn on the old Copics there. And that will load. It's going to be, be playing at three times the normal speed. Um, and then actually, after this, as a little bonus for those that stick around to the end, there's going to be a blink little Copic marker piece that I did for Mexican as well. So, um, yeah. Again, this is all from 2016. This was a commission. And this was actually when I was first uh, starting to mix... Uh, Distress ink for backgrounds with markers and then eventually color pencil. Um, this is my initial sketch. I did a blobby. Look at that. And I do all my like rough sketches on cheap copy paper. This was three hold. So, a hey, Rob. Wasn't even going expensive on this one. <laughs> and I will draw this traditionally, scan it in, print it back out, and do the markers. That's basically how, how I was doing these commissions at the time. So I'm going to get to work. If anybody has anything they want to talk about, you have any questions, you just want to rant about the X-Men 97 or life in general, just let me know. Uh, leave it in the comments or in the chat. I will read it and get back to you for certain. And if you'd like to support me, I always go to my uh, shop, sketchcraft.com, pick up print. And when I have it, original artwork, you know, it sells out. But I'm going to be stocking it up soon with sketches and rando things to do around here and some more expensive pieces that... I wouldn't mind getting rid of because I'm starting to fill up on art again in this place and I try not to keep a lot of it on hand. So there we go. Okay, let's get to work. Um, fun morning though. I, uh, I've been trying to render... Oh, look at That's my old... And that is my old... Old, 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 uh, what do you call it? Mechanical pencil. It's my old mechanical pencil. I don't use that one anymore. I'm using this Kuratoga. Um, that, uh, that's too much. Yeah, so that was a nice mechanical pencil, but it would snap a little too much. And I have a pretty light touch these days. So I have this Kuratoga color pencil I use now. And I mean, a color pencil, mechanical pencil. Um, and it keeps, a, it's got like a stabilizer on the mid. So it's super nice. But, you know, often you see me drawing on silhouettes digitally, and you're like, Rob, do you do this traditionally? Yeah, I just print out the silhouette. When I was a kid, I used to do like a... Uh, Markers, right? Like a Sharpie marker at first when I was younger, like in junior high. And then in high school, I found like uh, chart, like bigger markers, Prismacolor markers and stuff. But I would do the markers separate and then use a light board and trace over. Um, my first light board, sad to say, was just a light bright. And I put a piece of uh, plexiglass over that we had lying around the house. Um, used to blow out my eyes with all that light. <laughs> <laughs> I had these uh, Back to the Future 2 glasses I'd wear, shades to keep the light from blinding. Um, you know, I've, 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 I've done a ghetto, folks. Ghetto. It's not a good word for it. I've done it on the cheap. How about that? Let's, let's, let's see. I've, you know.
crazy to see me working like this. I still do rough sketches sometimes this way, but I just I'll just freehand draw them usually. Um, sometimes I put down a silhouette. It is weird. I mean, I wish I had one exact way I always worked. I'd probably probably get a lot more work done that way. But um, so I was trying to say is this morning. Um, I recorded me coloring the green Power Ranger piece, but um, the last half of it, or the last third of it, um, the file is there, but somewhere towards the end of the file, there was some weird corruption. I think it might just be a bad sector on the hard drive. So it pauses like around 91% rendering. And I've run it through file fixers. I've tried everything I could. To give it a different container. I've tried every ghetto program, every high-end program, and um, I cannot get that one file to work. So what I might do is see if I can cut out um, the bad parts from that, right? And I can get it up. Otherwise, I may just have to put up what is rendered, you know, which is a decent chunk of it, but not the good latter half. What can you do, right? Like, like I, I try to, that's, that's why, why I, like, I blame myself, myself. I should have streamed it. I was just like, I was afraid the last year of streaming anything that, cause people might see what's on my desktop. But now that I got this new setup, um, it's not really a worry anymore, but yeah. So there's a few things I just didn't stream. I would just record on my end and yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. And I'm drawing with Copic Multiliner. So what I tend to do when I'm doing this kind of sketching is I'll block in with red pencil, right? And then I'll sketch with, um, well here I'll just sketch with Copic Multiliners, but what I, what I, uh, I sometimes do now I'll sketch with red, red pen first, red pen first. You know, I got a feeling this is the wrong video. Give me a second, folks. I'm drawing too slow. Is it? No, that's the right video. All right. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. That's the right video. Even sped up. I must have been not in the mood to draw this day. <laughs> I'm like, why am I, even at three times, I'm like, why am I taking so long here? Like, oh, I know, I wasn't in the mood. This is like the beginnings of the way I sort of draw hair now. More as like big shapes, you know? So, I, uh, this is me breaking out of the way I've been drawing for the last four, four or five years and going back to kind of like how I'd want to draw. So, it was a, a bit of a learning curve of experimentation. I feel like I got a really good handle on how I like to draw now. Now it's a matter of like getting better at certain things and being more efficient and just getting people acclimated. I mean, on the upside today, it was it yesterday I got an email from a magazine publication that wants to print some stuff that I did recently, you know? And I was like, hey, you know, like that's, that's a good sign folks, you know? I used, I used to have to hit all those people up like rando and send stuff and hope to get in, you know? And I mean, it would work, but it's always nicer when they're finding you, you know? So but let's, you know, let's me know perhaps Rob's on the right path here. You know, perhaps, you know, that's why I like, I don't know, folks, you know, I had a real come to uh, life moment back in 2015, 2014. My, my dad passed away, then my mom passed away and was close to my dad not with my mom but they all died really young so like I just was like okay not only am I going to take better care of myself I'm going to start doing the things I really want to do because I, I sort of feel like what if I go early right and you're going to we're all going to have to face that mortality some sooner some later but 
eventually you will get there. And I just decided, okay, the first thing I want to do is I'm, I want to get seven hours of sleep every night. Because <laughs> since I was in high school or even before high school, I was not getting that. Especially once I started working after high school, I was getting... There was times I was working 100 hours a week. It was nice. So, um, took care of exercise, took care of that. And then with my art, I was like, yeah, I just want to start to draw the kinds of shapes and the kinds of proportions and the way like, I always liked to draw when I was a kid or I, things that I enjoyed looking at from Bill Watterson to Carlos Paglia you know uh, Humberto Ramos would be in that mix uh, older Humberto Ramos not so much the newer stuff um, you know Cliffhanger Comics Bone Yonan Vasquez cartooning cartooning comic superhero slash cartooning and so I was like, I'm just going to lean into that <clears throat> and then start to do more like stuff that I love doing. Color pencil, painting. And I'm just going to see where the, those those paths lead Rob to speak about myself in the third person. And um, I remember like sketch covers were a huge thing at this time too. And there's still a market for that stuff like on whatnot and everything. But... For the most part, it's not really a thing much anymore. And I remember like sort of like doing a few of them, but then sort of rejecting working on that stuff because it was like the paper sucked all the time. And then once CGC came out, everyone's like, you dinged a corner. It wasn't perfect. I'm like, man, I'm not up for this. I'm just trying to draw fun art. You know, I'm not trying to give you a, you know, a high end collectible. Like, I, I can't do it. My buddy Shelby Robertson genius at that stuff dude he's super good at it you know i am like man i just make art dude you know i pack it well you know but like i put if you notice like all my graphic design like i always put textures dings and creases and stuff in my in my digital work like just chill out um i was doing all these on nine <clears throat> sorry one second it's always when you first talk, right? <clears throat> Ooh, good fun. Let's just drink some coffee here. Yeah, that's bad. All right. Super fun. But now I just I work on my own stock. It's, I do have some a bunch of older sketch covers lying around. I was like, maybe sometime I'll do something with these. But then again, I just prefer drawing on my own paper stock now, so... I don't really see that happening. Let's do a little artist shout-out appreciation for a minute. Let's mention some artists you guys can check out that I follow and people that I... I dig. First, let's mention Shelby Robertson. You can check out his YouTube at American Discord. He was uh, an extreme. Uh, he worked at Extreme Studios back in the '90s, and uh, he's still doing comics and video games and all sorts of awesome stuff these days. And if you like Copics, you like really great ink work, man. That dude, that dude's got all that stuff down, and he's a great colorist too. So he's a bit of a renaissance dude, that guy. Shelby's awesome. If you're looking for cartoony, like awesome characters, big art, check out Gang Feather on Twitch and on Instagram. Ashley West Gang Feather. She's dope. She's always hooking up stuff. She got her book, Luxury and Lunacy, coming out. She's always streaming that. She's dope. If you like Cool World, you like Hotel Has. Was it Has Been? Hotel Has. I always forget the name of this thing. Too many similar letters. Um, you know, that sort of Ankama meets anime kind of vibe, dude. She's she's definitely along that line. This is some great, great pencil art, dude. She's super good with the graphite. Like, As you see, I don't really draw on graphite. Like, I just do rough sketches in red and draw on pens. I draw on pens. I just keep it real rough. And then if I want clean... I do digital inks. Clean digital's where I keep it clean, you know. 
I just don't have the control for being physical art. Thanks. And that's Scotty Young, right? That really great ink work, dude. Cannot do. If you ever want to be humbled, I, uh, years ago, I got real lucky and picked up a piece of Scott Williams inks. He inked Greg Capullo for a Wizard Magazine contest, and I, I own it. And I, mean, I just stare at that thing all the time, like, this guy was just, he's just too good of an inker, man. Like, I could, I, it is beyond me to do, for certain. I have, I tend to draw more technical, by the way, like when I'm doing traditional stuff, like it's, it's rougher and more technical, a lot of sharp edges. So it's like I've, I've tried to loosen that up a bit more, but I can't. Digitally I can, mostly because I can draw with my whole arm and I can set the position smoothing to be a little smoother so I can get rounded stuff. Traditionally, I'm just more of a scribbler. And that's okay. You know? I mean, it's not okay for publishers when you want to turn in that stuff. And they want the clean stuff. <laughs> but for me, it's okay. I also set up like like a lighting scheme with the red pencil. So it's gonna be like lights coming from top going to bottom, right? It's like a high up there light. Um, and that shading I just think is like a bonus. And I do that to all my my lines. Even now, like when I do lines for the book, I do traditional lines kinda after I do the digital work or you know, so I have artwork to sell. And I'm not encumbered by deadlines for that. Um, and it can be a little rougher. Um, but like I add the shade in, you know, which is a bonus. It's like a little extra bonus. You don't get it in final art. Helps when you do colors because you can use that shade as a guide for where you place down your colors. Ichabod Crane hitting us up from my uh, YouTube's. What's up, my good man? I don't know if you remember me. You made the time to talk to me about Jolly Daggers. I have you been doing well. What's up, Igabod? I do recognize your name because, you know, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. I will pursue my own comic stuff when there's time to do that. Right now, there's no time to do it. So, I don't worry about it. But thanks for joining me, Ichabod. Switch on the YouTubes. If you can do Rob a solid, you can give me a little smiley face or some kind of like in the comics. Help, help, in, you know, with the engagement. Help, help the algos. Help tickle the algos, as I like to <laughs> inappropriately call it. You just go right down that comment and you go, tickle, tickle. Right? You can even type in tickle, tickle. It will tickle the algos, right? And I reply to every comment, by the way. Right now, Ichabod, I am drawing Spawn Kills Every Spawn. Coming out this summer from Todd McFarlane Productions. And I'm hoping uh, as early as next week to start streaming some of the inks on that. Um, of the pages that have already been released to the public. I think there's a few pages I can that are out there that I can do. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks. Uh, give, 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 give the comments a tickle, tickle, folks. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's wake, wake it up, up right? Go, go, all right, buddy. Wake up, that. algos. You know? <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Wes, it's so proud of you for doing this bomb. Like, oh, thank you, man. I am putting in the lines. Sometimes, sometimes I get ahead of schedule. Sometimes I get a little behind. So right now, this page is taking me a little bit longer than it should have, but there are some characters that I, I don't get to draw that often. That I'm like, oh, legacy characters. And I'm like, this needs to be... Look, I don't know if I'm going to get another shot at this. So I'm like, this needs to be Rob's version of these characters. So I am putting in the details, my friends. The details and the expressions. I'm hoping to bring the most expressions ever put into a spawn comic. That's, that's my hope. That is the goal here. This damn boom mic oh, it gets right in my... I wish the mic was above somehow, but I can't make that happen. This room has insanely tall ceilings, and that can't happen. So, sort of stuck with what I got here. Pickabot says, I'm making a lot of progress on my video game. Easily's Fun Shop of Horror. Oh, dude, that's dope, dude. You should send me, um... Dude, put a link to that in the comments, dude. Like, for real. If you got, if you got, if you, if you just got like a, anywhere you're tracking, if you're tracking any of the making of that on whatever platform, I will follow you. Except X, I'm not on X, but I'll check it out, you know? Like, I'm just not gonna, I deleted my Twitter account, so. That's awesome, man. Yeah, definitely when you get a chance, dude, show that stuff to me, you know? Yeah, I got, um, a buddy of mine who's a really great Unreal developer. He taught at Nomon, and he's worked on a grip of games, dude. You know, he's been hitting me up for years to do, like, at least put together a demo we could shop around. So I think when I'm done with this, other than the art book, that's going to be what I do first, you know? Because I, I got I got a good idea um, that's gameplay-driven, you know? Not just, oh, Rob's art is the game. Gameplay-driven, you know? So... Um, we, we just shipped Berserk, Berserk Boy, right? So, like, I spent, you know, a few years helping out with that, and so, like, I really learned how to, like, I've learned some of the game design, you know, tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. <sighs> Thank you, Rekabot. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys like video games, if you like Mega Man and... Sonic the Hedgehog. We got a game on Switch and Steam called Berserk Boy. I did the art for a lot of it, uh, and I helped out with a lot of other stuff on the game behind the scenes. So. I, I said I didn't do much, and then Zoo, who, who who was a leader on that project, and did you know the animations and a lot of the coding. He was like, "You you really helped out a lot, dude. Don't don't short sell yourself. Don't short sell yourself." So I'm like, "All right, I, I helped out." I wouldn't mind at least doing... I mean, I was trying to do this, like, game demo thing with Brandon and his wife for a year, and she was helping me out with that, and then they got divorced, and that's over. I gotta sort of start over from scratch. If anybody's out there is really into low-poly 3D, and you want to do a game sometime, you let me know. You let me know. I got a great take on a racing game I want to do. But I just don't know if I should be spending my years doing low poly 3D, you know? Just don't know. But Kuya says she was gonna... I don't even know if Kuya's a girl or a guy. I'll say Kuya, they, they said they were gonna help me out with Blender. But I don't know, low poly... Ooh, Blender's so good for that. I don't know. It's always tough when projects lose that momentum. Yeah, and I know my buddy, he wants, he wants, if he works with me, he wants my art as the driving force, you know? I'm like, yeah, but, you know, but I have something for that, but I've had an idea for something else for, for 20 years, and I'm like, and I do would like to see this at some point. It's just games are tough. They're tough to do by yourself, you know? They're super tough, man. That's why I got uh, so much respect for Zoo and the amount of effort it took to get Berserk Boy shipped, you know, and relatively bug-free and working. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, dude. 
so hard. I think my favorite era of gaming is the 32-bit era, you know? I've lived through almost all the eras, pretty much, you know? They're for Atari, NES, and television, ColecoVision. But that 32-bit, I just felt, had, like, the right look and the right amount of scope for a game, you know? Even if you did smooth ZBrush-style rendering, which you can do, you can make a HD looking Mario Kart 64, you know? Um, but I just think that scale and scope of game, I think is the way to go for indie studios. You know, 16 bit to 32 bit. Once you get into the P PS2 era, um, you're talking millions and millions of dollars. I just think that stuff is not, an indie studio is not gonna be able to crank out Final Fantasy 12, you know? just not possible. But smallish groups of people made wave rays, right? And um, Symphony of the Night, Mischief Makers. You know? and scope is a real trouble with games, man. I was on a, I was helping out with a project recently and, you know, I kind of had to pass on working on it more. It wasn't them. It was just like, yeah, I don't think you really want me on this project so much. Um, they did, but I think they were looking for someone else. And really. Um, super excited. But I was like, my advice to you is to scope this down. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I think you're a little over scoped what you're trying to do but yeah we were thinking about that I'm like yeah I, I would do that I would scope I'd bring that scope down the way I think about it is let your demo you know be like one arcade level you know and then let your final game be like an arcade port brought home but with extra features you know that's sort of the way I think about it. Like, if you remember on the Nintendo 64 when they used to bring games like uh, San Francisco Rush, you know, and stuff, and Killer Instinct Gold to, like, home, they would add extra features, right? Like, like uh, Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 3, right, had all those extra world features. Like, that's, that's kind of like, it's still the fighting game. But, it, you know, you're using the gameplay and the, the materials to create more scope versus more benefit, more bang for your buck versus trying to do everything. And then, you know, if you if you get some wins on your belt, you make some money, and, you know, get a bigger team and do a bigger project. I mean, if you look at the original Spyro, I think a team now could do a Spyro level game on PS1. And then, hey, you know what? Ten years later, when you got the money, you can do Spyro Reignited. You can take all those assets and really, you know, gussy them up a bit.
I remember this explosion being a bamf, you know, being like, I don't know how I'm gonna color this. Now, I mean, I could do, could do it so well with color pencil, but with Copic, it was... I was like, how am I gonna color this with markers? That's why, this is the one thing I don't like about Copic, is I just... I don't know, like, I have to, I have to do like a lot of tests, see how they'll react. And it can control the opacity, the color pencil, and the intensity. The Copic, you just lay it down, you're like, there it is. Liz Nemo says that is awesome. Thank you. This will go to color soon. It's just this was the uh, rough drawing. I give him big chunky feet. Got them chunky feet.
And today's coffee is brought to you by you. You people tip me. So I got a peppermint mic mocha decaf, which I rarely ever go to the old Starbies because, you know, the whole union issue. But uh, I went across from my streets trying to unionize, so I figured, well, all right, we'll throw some of them. A few bucks their way, give them a tip. And I tried the peppermint mochas at the local place I go to. And they're not good. I've tried to give them pointers on that. I don't think they want my advice. Like, just shut up. Go get it somewhere else. Looks like I want to get parts done. Let's see how I should scan that in now. Well, I really would have gone further with that hair. Like I really would have pushed that hair more now. So now I've printed that out. I believe I've inked that. Yeah, I've inked that already. That's just a Copic multi-liner red one, I think. A red wine. And you can see over there, those are my color guides. That's my old ass phone. Um, but <laughs> Because I have to do color, color guides to figure out how I'm going to do this stuff. Especially that, that explosion. And I'm coloring this on B marker paper. B marker paper. It, it, that stuff can end up a little streaky, but like I was using the streaks. And then eventually I'd, I'd soften out the streaks using color pencil. These days I tend to, if I'm going to do Copic work, I do it on uh, craft mixed media paper, like Strathmore toned uh, mixed media paper. Um, it's like got a cardstock feel to it. Or I'll do it on a hammer mill cardstock, 100 pound. 100 pound. It has like a real smooth feel to it, real smooth blending. It feels super nice. You can also use Eon boards. Eon boards are great. They have more tooth. 
more tooth. So like if I were gonna draw, I would probably like the Eon boards would be super nice. But I tend to just print out my inks now on paper, so I don't really need the tooth. See, like this would just be way easier with color pencil for me. Like it would take a little longer, but the skin tones and stuff, like it's just getting those lights. Everything's so dark with Copic, so you have to go, you have to stick with the real light ones and then go to dark, or use the light ones twice to create a darker shade. And with color pencil, I can just lightly use it. So you can control opacity. For me, it's why I don't like using um, watercolor brushes with the water in it, because it's easier for me to control the amount of water uh, on a regular brush. I can slightly dampen it. It's just I can't control it as well with a watercolor brush. That doesn't matter to most people, but for me, it's like I kind of need that control, folks. I don't like feeling like it's squirting out. There's no good way to describe it. It's juicing out on the page. I don't know. But the fun thing about doing this NDA podcast, folks, is I can share this stuff with with you on a regular. Because, like I said, this stuff has all been sitting in my live stream folder on YouTube for years. The algos will never show it to you. And um, the quality is hit or miss sometimes on these with the older videos. So, like, just making a straight stream video doesn't always work. Um... But, you know, now I can do audio commentary over it a hundred different ways. And if I forget something or I got a new tip, I can always update when I play the videos again. So, you know, that'll be super fun. But I guarantee you when this stream's over, I'll be like, oh, I forgot to mention that thing I did. So I'll remember it next time. So here's a good tip. Whenever you use black, you can leave the white open and then inside do like a fluorescent color, right? For the color of the hair. And then take a saturated color and just go over the edge to give it that saturation in the black. So you kind of halo around with the saturate. That's what I'm doing there. A little Copic trip, folks. A little Cop Copic tip, folks. Reds. Reds are the bane. The bane. Always tripping over reds. Cool reds, warm reds. Color pencil's harder. A little easier with the Copics with reds. But basically you gotta gotta have like a, if you want it to be cooler, you can use a purple, a light, light purple or the pink. If you want to be warmer, you want to use like a lighter yellow or orange to yellow like uh, chrome orange or something like that. Think about it. So that's an excellent tip. Oh, you're welcome. Use that. Make it your own. And any of the marker tips work for watercolor too. They're, they're they work essentially the same. Other than you don't have to wait for markers to dry most of the, most of the time, unless it's a shitty sketch cover.
Yeah, okay, here I'm using pink, see? I'm hailing it with the, the magenta. I could have haloed that with the chromatic orange and gone warmer. So it's just it's kind of like cool, warm, you know. So this isn't a pure black. This is like a W10, right? Yeah, it's a W10. So don't just start with black. Even when you're using black, you can go like pretty close, like a W10 or a C10, warm 10, cool 10. Um, this way, when you add real black, you still have room to go. Um, it'll show up. And if you just start with black, then there's nowhere left to, to go on the page for black. color is relative like that looks black but it's not probably closer to like an 80 percent somewhere between 80 percent to 90 percent but it's not so you know Hellboy 13! Hello, what's up, dude? How you been? And I went with the blue for the highlights on the black. You can see there I'm adding the saturated blue. And the more color you add over that, it's going to end up darker, too. You know, so you're... That's why I say you don't have to just jump to black. The more you add color over it, you know, give a little bit of chromatic black too. And this keeps your color palette down. You know, like you don't have to add a million colors. You're kind of reusing the colors you have, kind of create a little harmony. That's a stainer. That, that blue is mean. Oh boy, says I have that neck thing. So good. Yeah, I have moved to the Kuratoga mech mechanical pen. It has a stabilizer tip, but that one feels great. I just, for some reason, it was breaking my little uh, Pentel leads all the time. And since I moved to the Kuratogas, I haven't had it snapped maybe maybe a couple times ever. So I don't have a heavy touch either, so I don't know what that was. But it, it definitely feels great. It's got that little grip, you know? That little, like... Um, textured grip on the end, which really feels nice. Yeah, this is a Nightcrawler I did back in 2016. And a Blink's gonna play after this, too. I got a Blink going on after this. This, this explosion worried me. It wouldn't worry me now with color pencil. But with, like I said, with Copics, it's just like, uh... Uh... Will it feel explosion-y? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> and it's kind of a stylized explosion anyway. A little, a little tribal art-like-ish. -ish. Hellboy says, have you ever done Hellboy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a Hellboy. I did a couple. I did a watercolor one 10 years ago, and then I did a Copic one. As a matter of fact, Hellboy, if you want, I can play the Copic with color pencils uh, tomorrow, if you want. I can put that one up. 
on tomorrow's stream. It's been a while, but I have. I should do another Hellboy sometime. It's been a while. It's been a while. I gave him a really big gun. I have an echo? Oh no. Where's the echo coming from, folks? Where is the echo coming from? Okay, let me kill the music really quick and see if I can see the levels showing up. Thanks, Timmy. All right. All right. Okay, I can see. I can see. I can see what's... Thanks, Timmy. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this echo. Hey, guys, if I echo, please tell me. I'll fix it. So, let's see. Where is it? There was no echo. Daniel says there's no echo. And he can't hear an echo. I do see... I do see it twice. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Can you guys still hear me? Couldn't even tell. Yeah. But I think I know what it is. So let me know if you guys can hear me. So far. So far, no one can hear me. <laughs> We're doing it live. See, folks, this is why I play the videos. Okay, you can hear. Me. Okay, great. Yeah, no, my Windows updated and I have mixing software and it changed my settings on the mixing software. I thought I caught that, but I did not catch it. Okay, I'll put the music back on. There we go. Thanks. Hey, guys, please, if you ever hear a mecha, an God damn, if you ever hear an echo, let me know. All right, I will fix it. Uh, yeah, it was fun. You know, Windows updates your computer and you're just stuck. So what am I doing there? I'm adding in some mauve purple into the pink shadow. A little purple into that shadow. And I'm going to add a little... See, I would not do that now. <laughs> See what I'm doing here with the grays? I, and I, I think I knew that was a mistake. I would use color pencil to do this. This, no, it looked better before. Gosh darn it. Uh, yeah, like I said, Hellboy, I'm, I've already, these videos are already done. So, um, they're just sitting there waiting for me to download and speed up. So I will play that video tomorrow for certain. I would do that with color pencil. I would not have done that with marker. Daniel says, I've got to go, but I thought I'd just chip in and get some interaction. What was up, your artwork? Ah, oh, thanks, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for hanging out. Hellboy says he'll check it out. Yes, Hellboy. I will have it up tomorrow. Says, will that be available to buy? Oh, all this art is was sold years ago. These were all commissions. Um, I can get prints up though. I do believe I have prints of that. I will check if I have that. I should have that art scanned in. So, um, 
But uh, yeah, I can get all these up as a print. Elbow oh, says, I know you probably had this question many times, but what is your favorite hero and villain to draw? Um, look, man, I'm always... Because this year I got a Spawn book coming out, I'd say Spawn. <laughs> but I do love drawing the turtles. The turtles are my faves, you know. Spawn and stuff is like in my top two or three, you know. I'm a 90s kid, so I enjoy that stuff. But I think, I think the turtles look good in any style. The turtles look good in any style. That's how great the turtles are, you know, like... So I can do multiple different versions of the turtles. You know, I can come up with a hundred different ways to draw them and they would always look cool. That's not the case for a lot of characters. And I feel no pressure with the turtles. Sometimes with some characters, I feel like, oh man, you know, this, if it's Batman, I'm like, uh, everyone has a real preconceived notion of what that means. Superman too. I've There's only been maybe three Supermans I've ever liked, ever. You know, so like, I like Miller's Dark Knight Returns version, right? Obviously, the, the, the fourth book. Um, I like Bruce Timm's version and Carlos Maglia's version, which is a version, which is sort of a version of the Bruce Timm stuff, but with more detail. If you've ever seen Superman Infinite City, and that's probably my penultimate version. Like, that's the one I probably like the most when it comes to Superman. But uh, I feel like the face on Superman is so particular, you know. I think Ed McGuinness is probably would come next to mind. I like his, you know, again, Bruce Timmy. I was his minor Hellboy and Dr. Doom or Magneto. I think Magneto is my favorite Marvel character for certain. And Doom is dope, but that, that face mask, man, I mean, very few people really ever nail it, you know. So, I feel a little stressed on that one. Uh, gosh, man, just want to say thanks for making this stream. It means a lot to me. Oh, thanks, Hellboy. I appreciate that. That's, look, I spent the last year working on the Spawn comic, and I haven't been able to stream. So, like, coming up with the idea to, like, stream my old art so I could all hang out with you guys and chat, you know? I miss I missed hanging out and saying hi to folks. You know? So, I'm trying to make this the regular time, you know, 2 p.m.-ish MDT. And then um, sometimes at night, depends on if I feel like it or not, you know. And then if we can do, we're going to do some live art streams too, man, once I'm all caught up on the book. I got a little behind, I had some health issues, but I'm okay. But yeah. And uh, I come here to explain, like, this is distressing. So these backgrounds, hold on, this is a little blown out. Let me adjust this video a little bit. Mike, this camera I had back in the day was not the best camera, folks. So I've gotten a much better camera now. Edit filters. Let's turn this down a little bit. All right, let's turn that down a little bit. There we go. Let's turn that down a little. Oh, too too dark. That's better. Oh, boy says you're an artist yourself. This. Oh, thank you. Well, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Oh, boy, I think you are, right? But I got art tips and stuff in there. I got a whole playlist of just rando art tips. But these backgrounds, so that's Distress Ink Pads. And I've taken foam and I've made my own stampers with the foam. Like I took little pieces of wood and glued them on there so I could stamp the ink onto the background. That's how it gives me all that coverage. And uh, with the foam pads, you can like stamp it out like real nice and get lighter and lighter the colors and that's non that stuff doesn't fade that distressing is pretty good stuff dude yeah 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 but check out the art tips playlist if you're ever interested in like rando tips silhouette drawing color pencil stuff um, and if you have any suggestions if i'm missing something there's tons of things i haven't covered just let me know comment in any one of those videos i will get it and uh, i definitely want to be able to do something more workshoppy more workshoppy you know we can come on in the morning and on a saturday or something and be like all right here's here's how we do this you know so i'm not a big fan of just making like 10 minute quick videos um 
kind of like I know they're good for the algos, but like I don't think they're really good for learning. So. I appreciate that. See here, you can streak this if you want. I don't always do these bursts. I do like it though. You can see so you can burst that out. They don't make these pads anymore. These like distress ink pads. I accidentally got gesso all over it. I tried to get a new one. They don't make them no more. It sucks. Uh, Distressing is great. They have these pads and you can like paint with it too. We get that separate. I prefer to paint with distressing even more than watercolor. But that's me. Well, I just figure all us real artists got to stick together. All right. These uh, AI fakers out there. <laughs> You know, these these prompt artists, these prompters, prompt. How about that, prompters? That's what they are? They're not artists. These prompters, they can. They they ain't in the club. Yeah, like I said, I just got a new store set up, and I got a newsletter. I got to start too. I know everyone has one, but. I actually want to be able to cover some of this stuff in there. Oh, I'm covered. I got my hands are covered in distress ink. See that? I got this idea for the distressing from Sam Keith, creator of the Max. He did a sketch cover where he did like this really cool, like there's a Hulk or something. It had like this light green paint on the background. And he was like, he basically used a foam pad to stamp down watercolor. And he's like, yeah, it's so light that, you know, it doesn't mess the paper up. And so I tried watercolor, but I didn't get the intensities I wanted out of it. And Distress Ink is kind of how I got around that. Oh, now it comes in the color pencil. This is when I was first using color pencil to kind of like touch up all the marker work. The yellows on the color pencils are great. Hellboy says, I've been trying to hit some of yours and Mignola's cartooniness but still keeping it cool. Yeah, man. I think one of the coolest Hellboys ever was way back in like 2002 or 3-ish. Maybe even 4. I can't remember the day. It's around there. 20 years ago. Um, there was a website called Shane Glide Sketchboard Sessions. And that's where all the cool kids hung out. The cool artists. Shane Glides is a concept artist uh, in LA. He's worked on the Batman Animated Series. A bunch of stuff. And um, he basically would have these art jams at his house in Van Nuys. And I was, I, I'm from San Diego, so we would drive, me and my buddy Eddie, we would drive up there. And, you know, you could meet a lot. It was a great meet and greet. You could meet artists and they would, you know, we'd, we'd all sit around his house drawing, dude. It was like super awesome. But he started a message board called Sketchboard Sessions. And that's where we would post art before, D, this is before DeviantArt, right? DeviantArt wasn't even around at this time. And, um... Sean Galloway started posting there and Mignola was getting ready to do that Hellboy cartoon so he put out an open call he said I want to find a look for this cartoon submissions are welcome so everybody on there was putting in their Hellboy submissions I didn't because I knew I wasn't good enough but Sean did, did this version of Hellboy with this giant tail and this cigar that was so cool and they he got the gig but um Somewhere along the lines, they went with a different version of that. They went with the one they went with, which is fine. But his version on that one, dude, is one of the coolest Hellboys I've ever seen. You know, and I know he, I think he had troubles on that production, you know, like, but, um, that, I still think that's one of the coolest Hellboys I've ever seen was Sean's. He put it up on the internet with everyone had it, you know, like it's out there. Hellboy 2002 or three, somewhere around there somewhere around there. I did get a Hellboy into the San Diego Comic-Con souvenir book in 2004. Mine was more straightforward. 
sort of a bruised tin meets mignola kind of thing. Uh, no, I'm a huge Hellboy fan, man. I didn't. I'm I'm privy to the earlier stuff. Like I like the way the books kind of looked. Uh, up until like the walking walking corpse is my fave. You know, like up there, I liked it when it was a little bit more illustrated. I don't know. I mean, the stuff looks always looks great, but like I like the earlier stuff a little more. But you see how I draw, so I'm um, you know. This paper is B marker paper. Um, I still use it for like color pencils, but if I was going to do marker work, I was saying I use. I would recommend hammer mill cardstock, 100 pound cardstock. Um, the hammer mill cardstock has a really great for smoothness. Uh, new stuff is less. Mignola, yeah, the earlier stuff too, yeah. Um, I also recommend Eon Arboards. If you go to their page, you can get like blank 11 by 17s. Uh, that stuff's really good. It has a nice tooth to it. Uh, it takes the marker really well, too. The, the the B marker paper is good. It just can be a little streaky for some folks. Some people don't like that feel. I get around it by using the color pencil. You know? But these days, if I did marker work, I would do it on hammer mill or the Eon boards or uh, tone craft paper, which is... I did a couple commissions last year, an Apocalypse and a Stripe I did on the craft tone paper. I really like that. I mean, you'll have a big... Yeah, Blade 2, Atlantis. Um, I mean, I discovered his work when Cosmic Odyssey came out. That's how old I am, you know? And uh, I got a free copy of... They put a Dracula issue 1 in the 99, 1992 comic on Souvenir Book. Everyone got a free copy of that issue. So, um, the Dracula book blew me away. That's pre-Hellboy, you know? And, uh, so I was there for when Hellboy launched. If you don't live in the U.S., you have to find that on Amazon. Um, yeah, you know what? Just ask me in the comments, right? Or how about this? Um, I'll just put a link to the paper. Uh, I'll put a links, Amazon links in the, uh, in the description for this video when I'm done today, all right? I'll just do that. Um, I don't have an affiliate link. Probably should get one, but whatever. I'll just put the links in there. This is my trading card boost, right? Like that, you know, the kind of stuff they used to do, like Marvel Masterpieces, right? Like the Joe Jusco. This is me doing like the Joe Jusco. Yeah, I love Blade 2, dude. I love Blade 2. I saw that in theaters, you know? Still the best Blade movie, in my opinion. I mean, I like the opening to one, but Blade 2 is a whole movie, so, you know. Am I doing anything special on May 4th? No. I do a Star Wars podcast, and May 4th is kind of a gimmick. Even Lucasfilm never did anything on May 4th. It was always, like, a place to... Uh, it was always a moment to sell, like, merchandise for them, so... Star Wars didn't come out on May 4th. It came out like on the weekend, on Memorial Day weekend. So really the anniversary of Star Wars is Memorial Day weekend. But I'll be working on Spawn, man. That's what I'll be doing. I'm working on Spawn right now. Oliver Vettine has a great Hellboy, too. He did that one shot like a year ago. I own that. He's a great Star Wars artist, Oliver Vettine. He's probably my favorite comics Star Wars guy. Him and the cat that did um, the Star Wars manga for A New Hope. And Carlos Maglia. Carlos Maglia, for certain.
Oh, was his Medical Cinemas remaking all the movies? Yeah, yeah, they're re-releasing all nine of them. So I do the Star Wars podcast uh, a few times a week called uh, Making Star Wars. We've been doing that for a couple years. I'm on there with uh, a guy named Bespin Bulletin and Jason Wards. They're like insiders, you know? So that like Jason had like all the scripts to Kenobi before it came out and stuff like that. And he's been breaking Star Wars news for years and Bespin too. Bespin, he's he's from the year the Europe's from Wales. He's from Wales. But um, yeah, we were talking about that. Like, I think it's because they had planned on. I don't think they they trust the Phantom Menace be enough of a re-release, so they're putting all of them in theaters to kind of get everyone there. But it's only like one weekend. It's kind of nuts. It should be for like a week. I feel like there's so little out in the theaters. I'd see Rogue One again if they had it in 3D. I have the 3D copy, but I would I would see that again. I've already seen all the Star Wars movies in the theaters, so not not as big a draw for me. But I would see Rogue One again in the theater. I'd like to see that with a decent crowd. That'd be fun, especially now because everyone's come to appreciate it. You know. You love the Han and Chewie comic. It's a great run. I heard that. I heard that. Carlos Maglia is my favorite Star Wars artist of all time. He did a Han, Chewie, and Lando comic back in 2000, 2001 um, for Star Wars Underworld. It's called the Yavizavid. It's got a dumb name, so I just call it Underworld. Um, and I really like his Han Solo and Chewbacca. The Chewbacca has maybe too many gums? That'd be my only complaint, but I love the look of that book. Have I seen the new Ghostbusters? I have. I have. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Not perfect by any means, but it was a fun movie. I think they need... If they're gonna... I, I, I really think, it, you know, that movie could have done well with them. There's a lot of ideas, I think. But um, at the end of the day, I think it needs a director that... Someone like David Yates or someone that knows how to, like, handle a young cast and tell a pretty big story within a budget. Um... Uh, Gil Keane's a good director. I love Monster House, but um, I just there was a lot of missed opportunities with certain shots and coverage. I was like, yeah, I think someone David Yates would be the I, I think would do well with that series. But it was fun, man. Like I like it's you know I like the original Ghostbusters. I like Afterlife. I like this one. So I like this better than I like Ghostbusters too. That was a movie I didn't like when it came out in, in 1989. I was not happy when I was a kid, so. Have I ever played, Joseph asked me, have I ever played the OG X-Men arcade game? Oh yeah, dude, with the three screens, dude. Come on, come on, man. They used to have a setup at Star in Starcade at Disneyland. Me and my buddies, anytime we'd go to Disneyland, we'd, we'd live in that arcade for the better part of an hour or two just playing playing X OG X-Men Timmy says he's gonna go see The Phantom Menace The Phantom Menace if they redid the 3D to that I would go see if they redid the 3D other than that I have no interest the original 3D release of that was not good Yeah, I wish they would make another 2D X-Men brawler like Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, but with the 90s X-Men designs and storylines and stuff, you know? It'd be super awesome. Based off the animated series. Yeah, all those arcade games at the time were great. The Punisher one with Nick Fury. The Spider-Man one was fun. It was just a goddamn quarter muncher. The Sega one, it was mean. Like, your health was a uh, was a number meter, and when you got hit, your number meter went down. And it would just go down without getting hit, sorry. Without getting hit, it would just tick down like a timer. So you'd lose health when you got hit, and you'd lose health by just walking. 
and Spider-Man moves super slow, but the graphics in the comic art style are great. Just you move too slow. That used to be a Starcade too. I wasn't able to beat it though until we had these these arcades in the mid '90s called Wonderland, and. Um, it's gonna go to the Blink one next. Uh, it was called Wonderland and you pay five bucks and then every arcade game was like uh, 10 cents or a nickel and then they had a free section. And eventually the Spider-Man game ended up in the free section and I just stayed there for hours playing that game until I beat it. You gotta like fight Venom 800 times in that game. It's ridiculous. It is the biggest quarter muncher I've ever seen for a video game. Joseph says Alien versus Predator was God like yeah all those Capcom stuff was perfect. I've ever watched the old Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I, I grew up with that one. It, uh, Lord of the Rings wasn't my jam as a kid. I wasn't really into. I didn't like fantasy. I like fantasy for video games. I don't like fantasy for animation too much or live action. So I like the original Lord of the Rings movie series, but I didn't really care for the cartoon as a kid. I was watching King of Beasts Go Lion, the actual Japanese imports on VHS. My cousin would get copies. And she was, her mom was half Japanese and they'd bring them in and she'd just tell me what they were saying. Ever watch? Yeah. yeah, yeah. bit of a toony blink bit more of a uh, I'd say like on comma legs like a thicker legs so a lot of thicker legs and stuff at the time I just like the look of it but now I now I tend to do both you know I do whatever I remember I was working with a publisher at the time and he was like I don't like the look of your girls with the legs you know that's not gonna sell my audience doesn't look like that. I was like, have you seen your audience? You tell me they don't like thick girls? Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh yeah, Fist of the North Star. Classic. Classic. I still think this art of mine at this time was still stiff. Like this stuff doesn't move the way I would make it move now. I was really big into making things move early in my career and then somewhere around the mid 2008s to 2011s, this things got real stiff. <laughs> Part of it is just the way I ink when I draw pens. I draw more technical. So that's why I try to do all my lines digital. When I have to transfer them to sketch covers, um, it took me a lot to unstiffen. It's just because I don't know what it is, man. Like whenever I draw pens, I just get real technical. It's so weird. This green has a natural cool color, but again, you can layer these things over warmer yellows and stuff to warm them up. So it's, a very, it's just like watercolor in that way. You just have to think about it like watercolor. Joseph says, I can't think of no fantasy cartoon that would keep my attention, but I love playing any type of RPG. 
Actually, facts and I do on the NES. Yeah, fantasy video games I love. Fantasy tunes. I did, actually the only fantasy tune I really loved when I was a teenager was Record of Lotus War. Right. Uh, it was just animated so great. I just couldn't stop looking at it. You know. My my buddy had the VHS tapes at his house. Those were super expensive at the time. But I go to his house and just I just watch the shit out of it. Um, I really love that Dungeons and Dragons beat him up that Capcom did, right? You meant Apollo Creed. Oh, oh right. That's pretty random. Oh, well, you're jumping subjects. But yeah, yeah, Carl Weathers. Super. He lived a long time, but yeah, too, still too soon. Shit, another 20 years with that guy. Let me adjust the contrast. This is a little blown out. It changes with every video. Like I constantly have to like adjust this. Dialing it in, so it's a little, a little finicky. There we go. That's good. This is, this is really 90s. Was there anything with the ninja? Yeah, ninjas were big in the 80s. Nah, uh, probably because we're talking about Star Wars. Oh boy, probably because we're talking about Star Wars. Not the biggest fan of full figure commissions though man like they always just feel like they're not being drawn big enough you know it's probably why i like the chip you know several years because like you could fit the whole character on and still feel like you got a lot of the character the, the more character you draw the smaller they get you end up with all this negative space Says, I just finished watching Escape from Me. <laughs> Hellboy, you live a crazy life, man. <laughs> Hellboy lives the rando lives. He's just like, um, you know, I just finished watching Assault on Precinct 13. What do you think about the third act? You're like, well, okay, hold on. Let me let me dig that one up. <laughs> yeah, Big Trouble in China is in my top three films of all time, man. I'll tell you what, anytime I go to an airport, I leave the theme to the Pork Chop Express on a loop in my headphones. You know, that's how I get through security and, and all that. Yeah, Escape from New York's dope. The sequel, not so good. Although, I did chuckle my ass off in the theater when I saw The Last Jedi. And I was like, oh, they're doing the ending with the hologram is literally the same ending from Escape from L.A. It's hilarious. I was like, well, this... This is actually better than the version of Escape from L.A., but that's a great homage. That's That movie was sucked, but that was a cool part. That was just, I'm a crazy guy. I'm a wild and crazy guy. He's just trying to check my street cred, like how much do I know about 80s movies? And I'm like, pretty much, pretty good. Pretty good amount, pretty good amount.
The chick from Swamp Thing was in that movie. It was in a Escape from New York. Bridget Bardot, right? Bridget Bardot. He used to confuse her with Meg Foster when I was a kid. I don't know why. They don't look anything alike, really, but... I was flies I was really face playing as a kid. But yeah, Big Trouble is my favorite Carpenter movie. I really like Assault on Precinct 13. Legend of, of course, I've seen with Helen Slater, Christian Slater, no relation. Uh, Yardley Smith's in that, the voice of Lisa Simpson. Come on, man. Come on. You're gonna find out, Hellboy, I'm king of randomness. Uh, fun thing with Copics, folks. Um, try doing the hair with no lines, just painting it. If you're going to use lines for the character, you can do the hair with no lines, and it comes out really nice. Best of the best two. Best of the best one is better than best of the best two. James Earl Jones, Eric Roberts. Yeah. Dude from Reservoir Dogs. Got the cowboy hat. Uh, Sean Penn's brother, right? Hellboy's just checking my street cred. So let's see if you know. Have you watched all four seasons of Too Close for Comfort? I'm privy to the first three. The fourth season wasn't as good when they got rid of the daughters and put Jim J. Bullock in charge of everything. I told you, man, I grew up in the 80s. See, they should combine Police Academy and Ghostbusters into Ghost Corps. Ghost Corps. Right? And just have an open call and have everyone, have a bunch of morons become Ghostbusters. You know, like they got all these ghosts they gotta catch down. They need more people to do it. You could just combine the Police Academy formula with Ghostbusters. I know. You're just checking things. You're trying to see trying to see. Have you seen Monster Squad, Rob? I have. I have. Oh, yeah. The Eighth Dimension, Buckaroo Bonsai. Hey! Everywhere you go, you're still there, right? Everywhere you go, you're still here. Wherever you go, you're still here. Or you're there. Yeah. There you are. Wherever you go, there you are. There you go. I got it. Just, you know, that'd be too much creativity for that. Hey, man, I, I am ready. I am ready for the trials. Let's do it. Put me on the creative team for Ghostbusters. We, we can do this, you know? I always thought um, Ghostbusters... See, Ghostbusters and Big Trouble Little China... It's the same firehouse. Egg Shen's firehouse is the Ghostbusters firehouse, by the way. So I always felt Big Trouble in Little China was in the same universe as Ghostbusters. It was just the east, it was just the west coast. 
So I always wanted to see it, you know, uh, Jack Burton pull into New York City in Ghostbusters 2. But that's the same firehouse. Eggshen's firehouse is the fire Ghostbusters firehouse. Have you seen Moving Violations? Huh? From the makers of Police Academy? It's got Bill Murray's younger brother doing his best Bill Murray impersonation. Super good. It's the best unofficial Police Academy movie. my favorite underrated gem of the the 80s house 2 no relation to any house movie just they basically took this idea and put it in as a house sequel but pretty good pretty good stuff oh, wait, so do you really think jack is a maker he's the protagonist but he's not he's the sidekick the, uh his buddy when whatever his name is his buddy is the real hero of the movie but jack is who we are we are jack burton we're you know the guy who thinks we're tougher than we are and you know we actually don't know shit so he's he's not you know he's obviously he's us Mr. Walker says, i wish people would actually take a step back and notice what actually worked when it came to 2D games, simple moves with great characters like Ben Fiquette. Yeah, I'm a huge bit fan of Ben Ben Fiquette's work. I have both of his uh, French mangas. He did two of them, like uh, with this owl, it's this little kid and owl. It's like a cast. I don't know. I don't know what. Forget what it's called. Um, not good with with French, but Ben's just one of the best illustrators and animators of our generation. Uh, Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap, Streets of Rage 4, whatever the hell else he's up to. If I was Nintendo, I would have given that man all the money to make a Zelda, you know? If I was Sega, I would have given him all the money to make a Shining Force, but I don't get to make those calls. Here I'm adding the shadows with black color pencil. By the way, I use polychromos color pencils. I really like them. They're oil-based. They feel better. They don't break ever. Ever. Solid. Oh, he's got these 82s in your head. Can't complain. This is as Ben gets it. Wish they would have dropped more picks or DLCs. Yeah. He has a art book. No, he did two mangas, two French mangas before he w did the games. Um, man, what are they called? Hold on. I'll get you the name. You can get the digital copy that thinks still off the sites. If you like his art, you should definitely check out. Because he did them and he was like, yeah, I don't think drawing comics are my thing. He prefers animation. But he did these before he did Dragon's Trap. He also did this, he worked on this short about pirates. I forget the name of it, but it dropped in like 2007 or nine, somewhere around there. It was this great, like about pirates, like an animated pirate short that was like, four or six minutes long. That was so good. It was fun. And you could see his style in there too. And the animation's so good. It's closely into a Monkey Island animated thing I've ever seen. When I say manga, I mean, this is full color. This is, I mean, manga just means comic. But, um. Let's see. Yeah, I'll get you the name. It's called, uh, 
Le Chevalier de la Chouette. Le Chevaliers de la Chouette. Benficouette. Le Chevaliers. Cavaliers of something. I don't know. Uh, Glenat put that one out. G L E N A T. Le Chevaliers de la Chouette. It just looks like the dragon's trap as a colony. So. Yeah. It uses those pencil. What is that like pencil look? Yeah, I love the dragon's trap, man. Oh, shucks. I did that quick, didn't I? This is one of my better f the backgrounds. I really like the way that background came out on this one. I don't think Sega wants to make any real video games anymore. They want everything as a, games as a service. They announced all those like, you know, Crazy Taxi and all these games that they're all going to be games as a service. So the Sega that we knew and loved is sort of dead. You know, Dragon's Trap and Streets of Rage 4 might be the last of anything they do. That's worth a damn. That's yeah, a real shame. Sonic Mania. I didn't care for Sonic Frontiers. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna flop, dude. For real. Just like when they did that Shining Force game, man, that looked brilliant. Brilliant, drawn, animated, and it was a games as a service. It was, it was a gotcha game, man. It's like, you dicks, just make. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. I can't explain that company. I have a friend that did like a lot of interviews with Sega game developers in Japan. He went to Japan and actually interviewed people and there is a belief amongst their employees that Sega is tied to the Yakuza because of the pachinko machines in some way and it kind of explains some of their business decisions but um, my friend was so afraid of it he didn't put that in his book <laughs> he was like he didn't really want the Yakuza knocking on his door so, the Yakuza whatever you want to call it He said, Hellboy says, my coloring techniques remind him of Drew Struz. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, like, of that generation. You know, I got all Drew's books. Uh, I actually have um, high-res artwork of his. I, I used to work on the Star Wars t-shirts, and so um, I got the actual, I kept the high-res scans of his posters from, like, the prequels and the special editions and some of the books in the Anna Jones. Um... I don't do a, an acrylic base, but yeah, I do like, I do a lot of color pencil work. And I think that drawing with color is, and color as a texture is something I definitely picked up from him and Bill Sienkiewicz. I'd say Drew Struzan and Bill Sienkiewicz are probably my two biggest influences when it comes to color. For certain. And Joe Chiodo and uh, Steve Olaf back in the day. It was Steve Olds. Drew did the poster to Big Trouble in Little China. You all remember? You all remember? says Drew's posters are prophetic. They are. 
They are man, it's one of the best. Probably the greatest artist of our generation. It's hard to say. He's definitely the most prolific, but I think the best artist of like my generation is Bill Sienkiewicz, just because I think Bill Sienkiewicz can do anything. I think he really can. He can draw realistic, he can draw cartoony, comics, paintings. Struzan probably second, you know. For what Struzan did, no one did movie posters better, you know. And book covers, I mean. But pound for pound, I'd probably put Sienkiewicz just a hair above, because he could do that in sequential work and cartoons. He's the first guy I ever see to put like a really cartoony something next to a real realistic something, you know, like he was so good at that. It is uh, trading cards too in Marvel Smash Piece series too. And even his Return of the Jedi covers back in the 80s. I think that might be the first thing I ever saw. It. His Dune stuff, man. I don't even like Dune, but the way he drew that comic was pretty impressive, dude. Like his Dune work, it's nuts. Those it says. For you being an artist for as long as you have, honestly, what is the one request you get? This makes you want to pack up and walk away silently. It's, uh, can you draw this in this style? You know? Like, I, I, I helped out with a game recently, and they wanted me to draw, like, a quote-unquote a Nintendo style. I was like, I don't know what that means. Which Nintendo? Can you name a game? And then they were pointing to me, like, to Splatoon. I was like, yeah, and then, but I mean, like, like, it, it need, I need to get paid to do that, you know? Indie games? No. No. I need to get real money. Like, I mean, and even then, it's kind of, I don't know, man, like, I did that for, I worked on Overwatch 2 for four months, and, um, oh, well, that's that. It's going to repeat. It'll just loop, folks. It's going to loop back to Nightcrawler. I did that on Overwatch 2. I changed the way I drew to fit the project. And then they ended up hating everything I did. And I was like, what's the point? You know? What is the point? How about I draw the way I draw, and then your 3D modelers just make it all work? You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they mean by Nintendo style. I'm like, which Nintendo? There's so many... I, I know, man. You can never... It's hard with some people, even like th th these were good people. They weren't bad people, but like I was like, I draw the way I draw, you know, like if you don't want me to draw the way I draw, go somewhere else. He ended up getting another artist, man, that I was like, you guys are a good fit. And then I was like, you know what? You guys are such a good fit. Just keep doing that. I'll, I'm going to go. <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm going to walk out of here. Like, if I'm going to be on an indie project, I need to be... I need my own way of drawing to come through. Even on Berserk Boy for a little bit, it got a little... Sometimes, I think I did some stuff Zoo didn't really like. You know, he just didn't tell me. Because some cutscenes have been redrawn, you know? And I was like, ah, oh, someone else did that. And I could see why, but I was like, alright, that's fine. But... Uh, I love working with Zoo. He's a good dude. But at the same time... Yeah, I, I, that's the one I dislike the most these days. Because the work for me is hard enough. Now I gotta like, you know. Like he's got Brian Froud's book. Yeah, Brian's great artist. Brian Froud, the guy who did all the concept art for Labyrinth. I really like John Lauren's Labyrinth piece he did like four or five years ago. I thought he did a really good job with that. You're not following John Lauren. L-O-R-E-N. Go follow John Lauren's art. Another brilliant illustrator. It's great, great illustrator, John Lauren. Just kids books, those concept art paintings. So good, man. He's a guy I'm always learning from, you know? I think the way he works is like, it's the way I think. So like, he's just doing it way better. Way better. Way better.
Hellboy wants to know, didn't John do something with Frankenstein? Yeah, he did a book that was like a Frankenstein book. Like a kid who saw himself as a monster. He did a couple kids books. He did the Frankenstein. I got him down there, man. I got him on the board. Yeah, John's John's a brilliant, brilliant painter, dude. I work with him on Crash and Spyro, dude. He's so good. Every now and then he does like a three hundred dollar, two hundred, two hundred, two to three hundred dollar like art course through like this Italian site. And if you can learn from John, I recommend you do. I recommend you do. I actually paid for that course when he first did it, but I was right when I was working on. Because I wanted, you know, I could learn, and I wanted to learn, and um, they had just put me on overwatch too and they were like they gave me like work to do over the weekend and so like that's when john did the class so i couldn't do couldn't participate it felt i was streaming it and it was like i told him like this sucks dude it feels like everyone's on the the field trip you know and i'm over here i should have quit the job then i'm gonna be honest i should have quit overwatch right then and there but i was trying not to be that guy who like oh you know i was trying to play ball man and it was a miserable four months. Miserable. Yeah, doesn't wear earmuffs. Dr. Frank Frankenstein doesn't wear earmuffs. So that week, I should have quit and just done John's. Or just not did the work and turned it in late and let them get rid of me. I mean, they ended up letting all of us go after four months anyway, so it was like... What was the real point to this? But whatever. All the people running that show at the time, I think they're all gone now too, so. I hope it's better to work there now than it was when I did. What time is it? It's 4.30. All right, everybody, we did two hours, right? With the two hour mark, two hours is good for a stream. Two hours is good for a stream. Hellboy, I am going to download that Hellboy video and we'll have that up tomorrow. We'll be doing that tomorrow. I may or may not stream tonight, depends on if uh, I got the energy for it, but I'm gonna get back to work. And thank you everyone for hanging out and keeping me company for these, these last two hours, man. Really appreciate it. Joseph Walker, Hellboy. Let's go up the list. Let's go up the list, right? Uh, who else we got here? We got... Uh, come on, guys. I know we got way more. Oh, this is Timmy Nielsen. And it only goes up so far for me. So everyone else who chimed in. Ichabod, all you lurkers out there. I'm a lurker, so I... I get you. I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna get going. Uh, definitely hang out with me tomorrow. I'll be back on between 2, 2.30ish. Around there, PM MDT. And we'll hang out for a couple hours again tomorrow. As always, uh, keep drawing. Get up and walk, drink some water, go watch X Men. <laughs> All the essentials. All right. Peace. Time for the show to end. Shopsketchcraft.com